All right, welcome to the Natural Balance Masterclass. My name is Neil. Uh, some of you have already met me. <clears throat> the ones of you that have met me are the uh, the ones of you that are either on my Snapchat, uh, which is Neilman25, and some of you are on YouTube, so you you know me from my YouTube channel, and um, some of you have gone within yourself and and uh introspected and introspected and gone so deep within that you know the full extent of who i am but you only know neil um if you've been part of my life growing up and you only know neil um through my older youtube content and uh snapchat and so some of you no, Neil, and, and some of you are just meeting Neil for the first time. And if that's you, hi. My name is Neil. Neil's not who I am. Uh, Neil just happens to be my name. And who I am is a child of God the Father. Uh, who I am is a multi-dimensional, infinite spiritual being expressing through a human body. I am a member of the body of Christ, and I stand here as a full embodiment of natural balance. I am natural balance. <clears throat> you are natural balance. Wait, 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 wait. How can we both be natural balance? Well, let me just take out the word both and we'll just leave natural balance because natural balance comes out of who I am. Natural balance isn't who I am, but natural balance comes from the source. This, the source, uh, you can call it love, you can call it God, you can call it uh, the connective tissue. Um, all these things are describing the same origin point of natural balance and natural balance specifically is my difference and it specifically is your difference and it's that difference that's not only a contribution in my life but it's a contribution in the lives of all the people around us and what natural balance isn't is suppression and depression and what natural balance is is expression and uh, the expression of what? Well, the expression of something greater than me, something greater than you, something greater than who we think we are. And who we used to think we are is this body. Who we used to think we are are these thoughts in our head. Who we used to think we are is our name. Who we used to think we are is a is a brother to a sister. Who we used to think we are is a is a daughter to a, 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 a earthly father. Who we used to think we are is is being a son to a an earthly mother. Now, the son being of an earthly mother, it can be the truth when you take into con context the earthly mother being the earth itself but if you're coming from the perspective of, of the earthly mother being a woman here on earth that birthed you that's not your mother that is a part of who i am that you got birth through into the womb of your actual mother mother earth home heaven on mother earth and the seed of your inoculation here on earth into the womb of the mother was planted by God the Father. And so now here I am on earth in the womb of earth the mother and being overseen by God the Father. And and I asked myself the question, well, earthly mother and and god the father like what am i doing here 
And I don't just ask myself that question. I ask God that question. And when I ask God that question, I got <laughs> three very simple answers. And I only got these answers after remembering who I am. And the the answer that I received was this specifically. Number one, be present. Number two, contribute. And then number three, celebrate. That's my sole purpose here on earth. Um, so what natural balance looks like for Neil is when I'm present. It looks, it looks like when I'm being a contribution. It looks like when I'm celebrating. And um, we, as the me, as the name, as the body, generate a perspective for ourselves that celebration has got to look a certain way. Well, if you're dancing just like this, you're celebrating. And, and if you speak just like this in a, in a certain intonation with this kind of energy and, and you wave your hands in this specific way, you're celebrating. Congratulations. You, you've done the recipe. You're now celebrating. Oh, but you got to like move your foot that one way uh, to, to make sure that it's a celebration. Um, that's conditional celebration. And celebration to who I am is like uh, expressing gratitude. Uh, gratitude for what? Well, gratitude for this present moment. Gratitude for my breath. Gratitude for family. Well, what kind of family? <laughs> Real family. Authentic family. Gratitude for birds. Gratitude for sunshine. No, but you got to move your foot that way to celebrate. Yeah, but I'm celebrating. I'm like so grateful right now. Like I'm in a celebratory state. Wow. Did you just hear what I heard? If you're celebrating, you're in a celebratory state. You're a celebrity. You're celebrating. <laughs> who Who is the celebrity? God. Who are the uh, Who are the celebrities here on Earth? The world will answer that question one way. God will answer it a different way. The world will answer the question, who are the celebrities here on earth? Like, um, they'll, they'll look at the people who have the most people watching them. They'll look at the people who have the most likes, have the most comments. And um, they'll look at people who other people are looking up to, um, specifically to um, – keep them on a pedestal so it's like uh, the world sees celebrities as being somebody on a pedestal that other people literally look up to because they're in an elevated position and god speaks to celebrities as being uh the humble and being the one who will give up everything for the one thing and give up everything material, uh, give up clothes, give up food, uh, give up drugs, give up sex, uh, give up uh, all these pleasures um, that our body loves and that our ego uh, loves and give that all up and receive God, and that are, those are, those beings are, those souls are the actual celebrities here on earth. And unlike the celebrities on a pedestal, uh, these celebrities 
who are submitted to God the Father are um, they're dressed in like a like a light orange dress with made up hair uh, might have earbuds in um, these celebrities here on earth they they might just be dressed in like a like a t-shirt wearing uh, like shorts um, looking like a regular human and they're not they're not what they're not a regular human they're a celebrity they're a submitted being to God the Father and People don't like those kinds of celebrities. Those kinds of celebrities don't get paid. Uh, people pay for actors. They pay for fakeness. Um, the real celebrities, they're authentic. They're real. Uh, they're surrendered. They don't give a shit about material gain. And they get killed for that. <laughs> Look at Jesus. Uh, so natural balance is, is your difference. And I don't know what your difference is. And I don't profess to know your difference, but I do know that you have one. And I will uh, assert that um, not only do you have one, your difference is something that you know you're meant to express, but it's something that you've been suppressing because you've been taught that it, it's easier to suppress it than express it. Uh, who here has ever suppressed your purpose? Just with a raise of hands. And uh, why did you do that? Yeah, who, who would like to share? Hey, Neil. Hey, now. I'm going to share. I'm filling into this. Why? I don't express myself, my true self, my true identity at all times. Why do I suppress it? I think that's the question. Maybe I'm not clear on the question. Did I get that right? Yeah, well, it's my question slightly different than the one you asked. My question okay. is, uh, why do you suppress, um, and maybe you don't anymore, but why in the past have you suppressed your purpose? I feel not supported, uh, you know, in the environment I'm in now, it would not be accepted. I'd be judged. I would be uh, disrespected. And I have been disrespected, uh, trying to express myself and being shut down in, in many corners, many, many places. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Feeling I can't be free in my expression in all environments that I find myself in, different people that are not awake, that are, that are not celebrities, authentic celebrities. I love that. I love how you said that, uh, celebrity. Um, and there are people I can, but mostly I'm not in that type of environment where I can do it freely. Yeah, without being so judged or there's a big something you know opinions or you should do this or you should and the opinions 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 and they leave you, they leave you no space to express yourself and judge immediately and you just appreciate it you know appreciate it learn from it and but in fullness no i just 
you don't have the environment to be truly who I am in all aspects of who I am. All right, so what I heard was environment, um, the people you're around, uh, judgment from other people, and like this, I don't know, the, it was a really badass word to use, but it was like uh, like degradation, almost like tearing down your spirit um, of your yeah. true self when you do express it. Uh -huh. That's what I heard. Uh -huh. Even though I know that's not true, in that moment, I can feel that, but I, I just go to my heart space and just know I'm big and they're small. They don't think enough of themselves. I know that. Yeah. And they're not awake. I know that. And I see the God in them and still love them from where they're at. I know that. But still, I still feel, I don't want to say caged. I feel, I feel I'm being prepared to be moved into a different environment where I can, but different. Because you're always going to be in different physical environments where you're going to have to adjust who you truly are, adjust it, or use parts of it. And not being accepted. It's still not being accepted, but not degraded and absolutely um, dis disrespected. Because everybody has their own definition of, of, of what respect is, you know, everybody, I'm learning that it's only from their perspective, what respect is. If they, they don't like what you're doing or saying or they're being disrespected and they don't want to hear anything about what they're saying or doing or your emotions or anything. It's just all about them because they're, they're wounded. They're a child. They don't understand what they're doing. And I love that. I love that about the person, you know. I love them where they're at. Thank you. Is that all, or is there more? Mm, I feel complete. Thank you, Neil. I love this. I love being a celebrity. You're welcome. I love how you express that. I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome, Dave. Oh, hey, Neil. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Andrea. And that, sorry to drop in late. Um, I just realized the time and uh, thought I'd drop in. So here I am. What are you guys yeah. talking about? <laughs> You're right on time in the present moment. And uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a question on the table right now, which is when in the past or why in the past have you done things to suppress your purpose? Huh. <laughs> well, it's the age old uh, thing called fear. And I know that's irrational. You know, fear is a uh, false um, experience appearing real. Uh, so, yes, that's probably the biggest thing. And um, there's a noise in there. So, um, yeah, that's uh, probably, I mean, I've, I stepped into a, a big thing a few years ago and it was a total manifest. Um, I uh, self-published a magazine. It was just an idea. And, uh, you know, it, it blossomed into a pretty cool thing. I mean, it was actually, it was called Eco Local Living. And I was promoting locally made, locally grown, local independent business of my uh, local area here. So this was uh, 2008 to 2014. It's when uh, people were uh, becoming aware of globalization and uh, the diminishment of downtown small businesses, corporations, Amazon, all that. And of course, um, you know, advocating for local farmers, farmers markets. So anyway, um, I uh, started that from scratch on an idea and uh, it, it came to be, it was a bi-monthly. I self-distributed it. I did a lot of the writing. I did a lot of the photography. The problem was I did it all. And I did have some writers and um, some participants, um, but because I was selling advertising to keep it afloat and it was in print, and it was a bi-monthly, it started losing traction. And, and um, uh, my biggest mistake was um, I had a friend uh, convince me to go with uh, a glossy uh, print. I was on newsprint, which was, uh, you know, obviously a lot cheaper. So I, I thought I could step up and gain more advertisers, have more pictures, all that kind of stuff. I ran, ran that for about uh, four issues and then it started unraveling and um, I couldn't support the print bill and the other costs. 
And uh, the biggest thing that uh, crushed me was um, the IRS um, came after me because I wasn't paying any taxes. And my wife was making money doing um, physical therapy as a 1099. So we we went down the rabbit hole of taxation is theft and it's bullshit. So we did some remedies and then we just stopped filing forms and just said, fuck you. Uh, but then they showed up my door and said, you know, hey, you got to pay us money. And anyway, long story short is um, the business uh, collapsed overnight because of that um, tax thing. And I was losing advertisers. And a, a, a person I spoke to said, um, if you're in business and you're not making money, it's a hobby. And I'm like, geez, I'm just running a hobby here. Um, so anyway, uh, it was kind of cool because I was networking with uh, farmers, small business people. I was getting to be well known in the area and um, did a few uh, community events. Um, and it just stopped. I just pulled the plug on it and it disappeared. And um, I thought I could get into digital. Uh, but I just didn't have the bandwidth for it at the time. And, um, and then I'm getting a job with uh, one of my advertisers, which was in the solar business. The good news there was I, I was able to get um, solar panels on my house and I got a 30% tax credit. So I told the IRS to, yeah, I'm going to pay taxes now, but guess what? You owe me money because I got a 30% solar tax credit. Anyway, so uh, maybe the fear, maybe the, um, I felt a little bit overwhelmed. Um, I collapsed, you know, I had something going. Looking back, you know, I should have maybe done, a, you know, started a podcast. I see these podcasts are really hot right now. You know, some of these people talking about homesteading and everything. But what I did, what I was doing was I was talking about people doing that kind of stuff, but I wasn't really the doer. So when I stopped the business, I went full hog into um, permaculture myself on my own little property. And I took a permaculture design course and I, um, in the, and in the design, I did my own house and property and I, um, I implemented the design, you know, myself. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it, I got uh, rainwater tanks here. I got a, yeah. a geodesic dome greenhouse. And um, yeah. I got, um, where is it here? There's my uh, chicken coop right there. Yeah. <laughs> and they're looking for the ducks. The ducks are somewhere around here. I got ducks and chickens. And oh, Where, and Where's your green uh, at, Dave? I can't walk away from my phone. Pardon me? Where's your greens at? Uh, greens, I got barley right here. Look at this. There's barley grass. <laughs> so, and then this over here. I got to get this. Here we go. Look at this. These are starts right here. And uh, there's some, uh, well, this is fodder right here. This is fodder. These are pea shoots right here. Uh, that's for yeah. the, uh, you know, it's funny. My, uh, my wife, uh, she does, she runs the rabbit tree. Uh, Brenda and um, we, you know, we just transitioned from winter to spring pretty quickly. And one of her rabbits had kits, and um, so you know, she was nursing them. Everything. But then we had a spike in temperature in the dome. The, the rabbits were in the dome, and the temperature got too hot, and the mother got heat stroke and died. And she got these babies that uh, are nursing. She's like, "Oh my god!" So that's what the uh, that's what this is for. This is for the the, the rabbits the fodder and they've been eating this barley grass. So they, they got weaned off their mother suddenly and Brennan has been feeding them barley grass and uh, they're still surviving. Wow. So um, that's it. So I live in a neighborhood. But so my point being is that I did a, um, you know, manifest of the uh, of permaculture on my own property here. And, uh, um, you know, the, my point, I think I've shared this before is that I'm trying to expand to the next level, you know, get some acreage, that kind of thing. And I'm, I'm like, that's um, what you just talked about with your sentence, you know, the fear factor or the unknown or, um, you know, how can, how can I just make that leap? Um, you know, and property is so expensive now and, um, everything we look at, you know, gets, is overpriced. So anyway, and our, our house is paid for, we don't own any mortgage or anything out of the whole system. So uh, it's a matter of how and, and what and, you know, you guys in Costa Rica, part of the thought was dropping out and just saying, I read this whole thing. About President you know, go and go. And at the same time, we could stay right here. And this is our own little abode, our little sanctuary. And um, we will, you know, we're just in a neighborhood, you know, where here's a neighborhood over here. 
we, you know, let's say shit is the fan and the zombie hordes start looking for food. People know that we have chickens and stuff here and, you know, a hungry man is, we would share though. I mean, we would just give food to people because we have plenty. We talked about this before, you know, I have, I have a prepper mindset. So in my basement, I've got 150 pounds of rolled oats in bags you know? <laughs> and I got beans and rice, uh, you know, for, I, I can live for a year without buying anything. And also, uh, anyway, so that's, that's the thing. And, um, what, what am I to do with the, uh, what's the move? So I'm in that moment of what next and, uh, trying to embrace the, uh, the worthy of wealth, uh, workshop we're working on all this stuff. I'm working with Andrea. She's trying to help me to stop hating stuff. <laughs> anyway, this is all good. Uh, I'm somewhat saturated with earthquaking because every, every time I turn around, there's a, another, um, a workshop or, a, you know, a visionary, um, meeting like this right here. So I'm trying to catch into them cause I do like the vibe. And, uh, but I'm just finding myself like overwhelmed. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> awesome. Uh, with the overwhelm, what's that from? Well, just, um, you know, my wife is, my Brenda is, um, she's, uh, feeling the stress of wanting to leave, um, and go more land, more land, more privacy is the thing. Uh, yeah. but for me personally, I'm, I'm very comfortable here. I have a I have a job with a corporation. I sell you know outside sales into uh, people's homes, you know a stairlift thing, and um, you know it's, it's making me decent money. Um, so it, it's breaking away from that. And uh, what am I going to do for cash flow? You know, breaking away. How am I going to fund um, my fund and my uh, my expansion? You know, so uh, that's the that maybe that's the fear of the unknown and stepping into the unknown, the um, without a cash flow or a security. So, I mean, everybody can relate to that, I'm sure. Just, you know, making that big move. You know, your heart's telling you one thing, uh, to, to do something, and yet your logic mind says, that's stupid, you know, you can't do that. That's uh, that's foolish, you know? You you know, you have, you know, security where you are. There's my, there's my, uh, you see, on the other side of the uh, um, dome, there's actually a chicken uh, cone there. We kill the chickens on that thing. So, yes, we eat meat over here. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm familiar. But yeah, I, I grew up I grew up that way. Are you from um, the north? Yes. Real actually very close to where you're living at. Uh I grew up in Indiana. Oh Indiana, okay. Well it's funny, my my uh wife's brother is visiting right now uh from Indiana. They live in Indianapolis. He works for Rolls Royce right there in Indiana, Indianapolis which is a jet engine company. He's an engineer. He's, you know, he's coming here to visit for a couple of days and uh, their parents are not far from here, but yeah, we, yeah. we're a cold climate and uh, we have a long winter and um, you know, so we have to eat meat, you know, to when things don't grow. So you need to have calories. Yeah. But anyway, well, I'm, a, I'm a prepper. I'm a, a food crafter. I can ferment stuff. You know, I'm very much very creative on the uh, food line of things. You know, I I, um, I can cook anything. You know, <laughs> so um, so anyway, that's uh, wherever I go. And we've been looking at eco villages, not you know, like like Earth Waking. But I was I attended the um, John Bush's uh, matchmaking thing with um, Eggs and a Build, and there's a there's a thing in Tennessee looks of interest. So I'm just not sure at this point, you know, what direction I should go or stay right here. All that, you know, Tennessee, there you go, right? <laughs> Andrew's in Tennessee. I, yeah, so. I feel the space you're in. And and the space that I'm feeling is like, a, how do I trust who I am to make a decision and have it be the best decision for my life, but also for my wife and then also for the entire collective? And I'm at a decision point. I've got to make a decision. I'm going to make this decision like, I don't know right. really soon, but I don't know what decision to make. Is, is that how is that? Is that accurate or is that not where you're at? That's kind of it. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Oh, I got to show you another thing here too. So hold on a second. So, do you have a rabbit right there? Yeah. Oh, I'll show it to you right now. Look at this. I got uh, Neil and uh, the gang. Look at this. Wait a second. I got to turn the camera around. There we go. There's there's the rabbit right there. This is one of the ones that you, you say. This saved, is one right? of the ones that did, lost its mommy. Yeah, look it's how big it is. Now. Nice, oh, yeah. It is. 
That he thing is looking happy. very healthy. Yeah. yeah the, uh, I added in sunflower seeds, so it got more fat in its diet. And it's yeah, and very it, healthy. Thankfully, it had enough teeth to eat them. I call Brenda the rabbit whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see why you call her that. <laughs> well, she, you know, she's the mommy now. She's the mom, the real mother died. And so, funny. so that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I was going to show you, you one more sharing, thing. Let me just show you one more thing on the, on the, uh, so I have a, um, I got a, I got a basement here. Okay. So in the spring, so look at this right here. This is actually Brenda doing this right here. This is our, uh, microgreen and, uh, sprouting tables here. Yeah, we got uh, artichoke right here. She planted these artichokes. There's more wow. barley. She's gone full hog with the barley grass. What's this? What, is this? what do you do with the barley here? grass, Dave? Barley grass right here, huh? What do you do with it? Oh, she's feeding it to the rabbits. Oh, do you eat it you yourself? Can juice it? You can juice it. I see. And we have we do uh, marigolds and uh, petunias for flowers. There's our uh, medicine right there. It's uh, this is all cannabis right here, sprouting. Look at all the, look at this right here. Look at, here's the meat. Look at all the canned meat right here. Yeah. <laughs> so look at this. I got, you know, here's a freezer. I got freezers full of stuff. Actually, it's working it down. But this is, you know, we got stuff from last year, buttercup squash. You know, we raised chickens. We bought um, I mean, we got some beautiful local farmers here. Look at this. This is um I stopped at old farmers uh Stand uh, just over the weekend, so we have a lot of great um, farming people around here. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, am I that guy too, or should I run away? Um, do I hold my ground in New York State? And uh, yeah. all three of those questions, yes. I should hold, yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't know. <laughs> you yeah. know. So wait a minute. That's my uh, fun basement. Yeah, just to show you over here too. I got a whole, um, oops, wait a second here. Here's uh, the side yard. So I got uh, a couple of plum trees. I got pawpaws over there. This is oh. all uh, merging to a food forest right here. This is the three sisters' garden. We've put beans, uh, corn, and some plum trees right there. And I got a whole row of blueberries. Blueberries next to the car here. Those are all blueberries over there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, not showing off my little uh, sanctuary. So this, my my thing is uh, Neil and Annette and, and Andrea is that uh, if I can do this on you know half an acre, what could I do on you know, ten acres? So there's an opportunity to expand. And one of the things about um, you know God, God and, and the Creator, He's all about expansion, and. Uh, and that's that's the goal is to expand this knowledge, expand this uh, opportunity, expand the food. You know, so uh, how do I do that? That was a question. <laughs> I, I heard. Are you are you looking for an answer? Because um, I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm currently in a position to not answer and i'm willing to hear your question again and answer no it's just yeah so i mean you can understand i wouldn't call it a conundrum um because uh, you know i like it up here we have the adirondack park uh, to the north the largest wilderness area in the northeast actually east of mississippi where there's lakes and mountains and beauty and you know i'd love to even go north there but it's just you know zone four it's a little bit cooler to do um, growing food but, um, you know, we're in a good place. We're, um, I call it the oligarchs playground because we're in Saratoga Springs. We attract a lot of money in this community uh, every summer. And to the north is Lake George, probably the most gorgeous lake in all of the United States, a glacial lake um, that's stunning and other lakes in the Adirondacks. So it's a good, it's a good area. It's kind of like Costa Rica wow. with snow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, there's some spiritual stuff going on. It's not as deep as Costa Rica, but there's definitely a vibe. Um, cause the Springs, you know, the, they call them the healing Springs here in, um, uh, Saratoga because they, they have minerals in the water that are years ago were deemed to be, um, purgative and, and healthy for the body before, you know, pharmaceutical drugs. 
It was the first pharmacy was uh, the waters here in Saratoga before the pharmaceutical companies took over. So there's earth energy here that's pretty powerful. I'm going to go with that. So uh, the pharmaceuticals are most pharmaceuticals, most all pharmaceutical drugs, pills, powders, whatever, are all plant derived. Um, but they're yeah. but they're plant derived, so they're extracts, and um, they're super concentrated, which is not normal in nature. And you're only getting like one compound rather than a full spectrum experience with the whole plant. Correct. And so, with what you were talking about with the water being the original pharmaceuticals, Earth is the original um, medicine cabinet. We came here held in the womb of Mother Earth, and God informs us, tells us, hey, eat this and heal your body. Because it's not about even healing your body at that point, because you're now in the womb of the pharmacy of Mother Earth, and you're never not healing. Check this you're out. just a human being. This is a. Uh... Here's medicine right here. This is a white pine tree. That is and medicine. you get two things. White pine, the needles are very high in vitamin C. Correct. And then also from pine, you get turpentine, which is a, um, a solvent, but it's also a purgative in the body. Now, we just did this whole workshop with um, Dr. Andrew Kaufman on turpentine. And Brendan's taking it, um, pouring it into sugar cubes and ingesting it. And it's supposed to take care of candida, any kind of gut issues, all that kind of stuff from the from the pine tree. How do you extra? So yes, the medicine is from the earth. How do you access well, we, turpentine in the pine? Well, we haven't actually extracted it yet, uh, but you're supposed to cut uh, some of the bark open, and you get the sap. You collect the sap, um, and then you distill it to get the spirits from the gum, and uh, that's the turpentine. Wow, it's an ancient process. You distill it with yeast. No, no, you just you just put it into uh, under heat, and it gives off its own the gas. Then you put it through a coolant, a um, the coil, the condenser, and it, it drips out as um, as a, as a spirit. I, you don't I need see yeast. What you're doing. It's not a fermentation. Yes. It already yes. is. Yeah, you're taking the gum, heating it, and the gas that comes off becomes the distillate spirits. That's how it's made. So it's basically just the gum of pine trees, the sap, that you put into heat and then condense it, and that creates the spirit. So it's um it's a you know I think it was paint thinner, but it actually its original use was as a medicine. And you will find that it's suppressed. It's suppressed. You, it's hard to find turpentine on the internet because it's been so suppressed. But it's actually one of the original medicines of the Aboriginals as well as the black slaves down in uh, the South, because they couldn't afford anything, but they could make turpentine. Pretty cool, huh? Wow. <laughs> I, I heard about this growing up and I never saw a turpentine visually. I've never seen it, but I've heard so much about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a clear liquid. Um, and you think of it as paint thinner because it's been used as paint thinner, but its original purpose was as a, um, you use a small amount. It's like a half a teaspoon. You put it on sugar because the sugar is the carrier, and that's what candida likes to eat is sugar in your gut. So it, it goes after the sugar molecule, but it's coated with the turpentine, and it kills the candida. It's like a sneak attack. <laughs> and that that we call alchemy. It's a, oh, totally is alchemy, absolutely. No, there's so much alchemy uh, going on in uh, in the plant medicine, in uh, – well, I make beer, I make wine, which is alchemy in and of itself with yeast, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it's my other hobby is, um, you know, I make homemade beer. and It's made with kits and stuff, but, you know, I buy the ingredients. But I'm the alchemist, you know, doing the fermentation and the the racking and all that kind of stuff, the manipulation. Anyway, so I'm taking up too much time on this here um, discussion. Yeah, if it's yeah, way spoke, too much. Is, is there anything else that you would like to share or is that complete? 
Well, I'm, what I'm, I guess I'm just, I am sharing. I'm sharing that. All right, well, well, if you insist. I have a lot going on and um, I, I could have a lot more going on. It's just, it's, it's that transitional <laughs> next step. So I'm trying to figure out what, what to do next, Neil. I'm just trying yes. to, when, you know, should I stay or should I go? I'm comfortable here, expand where I'm at. Or do I have, you know, am I supposed to go to a village, a place where I can expand my uh, skills, talents, and, and and gain expansion from others, you know, in another location, you know? I just don't want to start over. I, need, I, I want to go where there's already action, where there's already some uh, people doing things. You know, I'm getting old, so I can't just start over again. I don't, I don't need a, a raw land. I'd like to have, you know, some buildings. Like you guys did at Grace One. You already have buildings. You have something to start with. And then uh, that's why I was kind of scared. I looking at Grace too. I'm like, whoa, this is raw land. A lot of work to be done here. But you're doing it. I mean, you're planting trees. You're putting fruit trees on there. You're gonna. Yeah, you gotta, we're, gonna... we're actually in the uh, inquiry right now, and it's not even the inquiry. It's a forward moving process that's occurring where we're connecting with a woman by the name of Tree Jenny, uh, who's planted thousands of food for us. Uh, like all across the planet, not just in Costa Rica, but uh, she's a powerful being. And um, she, along with our garden team, uh, this year will be planting 800 fruit trees on the property of Grace Two. Um, wow. and, and that's projected to occur within uh, a two week period. So in a two week period in 2024, um, our garden team, along with uh, Tree Jenny's garden team, um, are to be planting 800 uh, fruit bearing trees on the Grace 2 property. And um, you're exciting. getting insight right now that uh, not a lot of people have insight into that. And I'm speaking it to you uh, specifically, Dave, because of that thing of it being a raw land, it being raw property, like it's, it's not developed yet. Yes, and uh, things are already in process. And um, I'm an artist, and I'm going to just declare that uh, you watching this are an artist. And what you're an artist of, I don't know, but what I'm an artist of is an artist of the natural world. Uh, I'm an artist of, of plants and of growing things and, and generating uh, food abundance that visually is enticing. And I speak this because when I see Grace 2, I see a canvas that already has art on it that wants to be uh, completed. And um, I don't see it as a blank canvas. I, it's already started. Uh, for example, um, just recently we learned about this tree called uh, Targua, which is also a dragon blood tree. That's like the other name for it. And this tree is the most valuable uh, jungle medicine. Like you, you literally, you make an incision on the trunk and it, it bleeds out red sap and uh, you collect this sap and this can be taken internally uh, for stomach issues, for immune boosting, uh, for your organs. And, uh, and then it can be used externally for like scabies and for any kind of skin irritations and uh, funguses uh, externally. And wow. because because it's so wet here, uh, this skin fungus and this mold on the skin or this whatever you want to call it uh, is pretty prevalent. And so having something that you can use externally on your skin is already growing on Grace too. Well, there's a um, if you look at the planet itself, there's medicine for all humans where you are. That's what, Thank what it you. said. Thank you. <laughs> that's what I was talking about, the pine tree. The pine tree is resident to my area. You're talking about a tree that's resident to your area, which is a healer for the conditions you're running into in Costa Rica. So that's exciting. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so yeah, um, Neil, I, I too see myself as a... Yeah. But so I appreciate your comment about the art. I think my art is... Um, my, my canvas is the land. You know, being a permaculture design guy, I have a degree in forest engineering. So, um, you know, it's looking at land and having a, and seeing a vision. I, I saw Grace too, and I, th I, saw, I thought to myself, well, we need a bulldozer and a track hoe and make ponds all over the place because of the, the topography there. But there are some key lines that you can flow into 
to create um, habitat in uh, living areas. Um, it's just, the, just some of the steepness there is a bit intimidating, especially when I walked down to the waterfall, I had to walk back up. <laughs> that was an ass kick and climb back up. So anyway, uh, yes, uh, I, I see the art you're talking about and the I feel the same way because you know my whole art is with food, with um, flavor, food, and with landscapes and you know seeing a vision of what could be grown in the future there, much like you are. So that's I think my purpose is to I had this crazy idea uh, to um, there's this guy doing what is called water stories. He's a uh, a water guy and he's traveled around the world um, building ponds and things like this and, and water restoration. You're bringing water where there wasn't any. Um, and I thought, oh, my God, all this uh, landscape in Costa Rica, going around to different land, get eco villages and, you know, helping them with design about how to capture water, not just with the, um, you know, the, the ponds, but also rainwater. You catch it because you guys obviously have too much rain at some times, but not enough others. You need to catch that water and store it and uh, keep it during the dry season. So all that kind of landscape design that can bring vitality to land. Uh, in the form of water. So anyway, just a fantasy there. <laughs> I think it's a very real one. It is. I just got to, you know, it's a matter of saying, yes, that's it. As Jonathan just said on Sunday, it's um, what you focus on is what appears and, and uh, expands. And my problem in, in the past has always been shiny objects. Oh, look over there. Or I'm looking in here and there's a shiny object over there and I go chase that. You know, mm -hmm. so I leave what I'm in they go chase something I think is better. You know, the grass is greener concept. And I'm sure we all suffer from that. But I have a sort of ADD um, issue. And uh, so that's part of it. You know, just having that focus. Yeah. And with that, I'm so, complete. Thank you. Wow. And with focus, what's it going to take? I'm asking myself and I'm, I'm asking everybody here. And if you're watching this, like I'm asking you. So what's it going to take for you to get uncomfortable enough to make a, a decision that will have you go from where you are to where, where you're meant to be? And I'm, I would love to open this up. So the question is, what's it going to take to have you be uncomfortable uncomfortable enough where you are to get you from where you are to where you're meant to be. Can I uh, chime in on that in a minute? Yes. Uh, well, it's going to reflect on that, that it's happened to me several times in my life. And it's just that being uncomfortable. I was in a past relationship. I think I shared that with Andrea and it was ugly and, and it was in my own uh, mirror. Um, but um, I had to get out of it. And uh, what I did manifest, though, was my current relationship with my wife, which, um, you know, was a kind of a um, soulmate. And um, but it was because I was uncomfortable enough in the previous situation that forced me to lead and uh, and to seek a better path. And and I did you know, manifest that. That's what I have. That's what you see when I just went around. And the ironic, the ironic thing for Brenda was that, you know, she manifested the same thing. She was stuck in a bad relationship. Um, and somehow or another we connected and I opened up with this permaculture and this, um, this growing of food. I were out the farmer she always had this farmer in bed at her, never was able to realize it. And it totally blossomed. I mean, that's why I called her the rabbit whisperer. She's got this whole element of herself that was stuck inside her and now it's being released. And, uh, this is what she wants to do. She wants to be an animal whisperer, you know, uh, going on forward. You know, she's like, you know, cause she's really into food security and creating clean food. And um, so that's what we're doing together, you know, creating a, a food sanctuary. So anyway, it, it was uncomfortable in the past. So I'm just, I'm not uncomfortable right now. I have to get uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. Um, who here is willing to go like 20 minutes over time tonight? And and just with a show of hands, if, if you're not willing, great. But who here is willing to go like 20 minutes over time? So that'd be like 520. So I got Annette, I think Andrea. Dave is a go. Are you a go, Andrea? Andrea, do you have a meeting? I, I'm willing. I, I just have um 
seven o'clock I've assigned. So it depends on if, uh, you know, we stay in the space and the other person that's going to be at the next one will be there. I can check with them if they'll be there. Yeah, Andrea has her master class that I'm a part of, so I guess I'm in it with her right now with you two as well. <laughs> but I think Peter was wow. supposed to be involved, right, Andrea? Well, my friend from Alaska tuned in. I, it's really interesting how that came about. I mean, I'm willing to combine them too. So that's, I mean, I'm feeling very present and natural balance and with you all. So do you have a suggestion on how this will work, Neil? Uh, what time's your master class? It's scheduled seven to eight central, so in six minutes. Yeah. Um, what do you want? Everyone to be to be one together. I I I I can see it working that way. How how I, would it be were we to combine master classes? Like what? Can, what is your master class? Um, it's it's in development, and currently, as uh, Dave mentioned, it's movement from hatred to love, um, eliminating hate and moving into love, which could possibly correlate with anything that's interfering with us and our purpose. It it did for me. Um, yeah, and uh, is this a donation based master class? Currently, it's it's been offered, you know, he, he can, uh, Dave and some others contributed, but no, like, it would be welcome for everyone to participate openly. And if somebody wanted to donate, they can donate? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm willing to combine them. I don't necessarily think we need to. Um, what I have in mind is an exercise, and I'm not attached to the exercise either. So um, that's where I'm at. So um, okay. who here would like to uh, – and this is going to – I already kind of got your and, uh, your answer, Andrea, like like you would like to see people as one and, and together. Um, so this is more directed towards Dave and Annette. Um would you like to see these master classes combined? And and does it feel in alignment? I'm not sure about the alignment. I was going to make a suggestion to your um, your your uh, exercise. I mean, we could revisit it next week, and I'll make sure I'm on time. Um, or you know, we could do what you proposed here because you're in the flow at the moment. I don't want to stop that. But um, I do have some visitors here. That's the other thing. And then Andrea's got her thing. So I mean, I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> is what it is. Yeah. Where are you at, Annette? <laughs> um, I'm feeling the two classes um, separated. Yeah, separated. Amazing. That's, that's something yeah. I'm coming up with. Yeah. Okay. Um. So now um, what I'm feeling, what's in alignment with me is to um, so dry. Yeah, I think end this master class. And if you're open to it, Andrew, I would love to join your master class. And then in addition, um, I would love to share this exercise on your master class. That's perfect. So you can just send the link, um, Andrea, to uh, Neil and Annette, and they can join if they like. I already have it, so we can just plug okay. in over on your thing. Thank you. Um, can you put the link in the chat, Andrea? Yes. So the, the question right now is, well, and, and the question has been answered specifically for this exact scenario, but 
the question is, all right, so I'm here, and now that I'm here, um, literally, how do I make a decision on left to right? And how I make that decision is based on my commitments, and it's based on tapping in and going, I'm here, love, what would you have me do here? Yeah. Okay. And then actually listen, and then wait till I hear something, and then take an action based on what I've heard. With that, thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Annette. Thank you, Dave, for being here. This is the completion of Natural Balance Masterclass. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah.